conversation between objects. For additional insight, read Riddles in Accountable Healthcare by Ron Bellin, Amazon, available in Kindle or paperback. Like the average American who speaks in prose without knowing it, you've begun to speak in the language of objects without knowing it. This is a powerful abstraction. What are objects? Objects talk to other objects. They associate with other objects. They create new objects by talking and associating with other objects. The new object can talk to other objects. And by associating with those other objects, they create yet even bigger objects. So you can see this gradual aggregation of objects into larger objects and yet even greater objects, each building on the other. Consider the event canvas condition line. It's an object containing other objects that you modify. Think of it for a moment. The event canvas condition line has events which can contain an object called sets. It has durations, demographics. The condition line talks to other condition lines. It's on the event canvas. Each object, which is a condition line, talks to other objects, other condition lines, on the event canvas. The result of that conversation between condition lines is an object that is then acted upon by the index event line, yet another object. And the resulting conversation between the condition lines and the index event line is a cohort with an exposed index state on its surface. The cohort is an object with cohort members represented by the MRN, their index state, and the properties belonging to their defining index event. So if you think of the event canvas object before the build, you see the line, the index event line, condition line 1, condition line 2. You then build, and then the result is a cohort object. Internal, you see its DNA, which are the rules that created it. But you see on its surface what in biology might be called an epitope. That is, the surface has the representation of each of the individual members. And a member of this cohort has an index state, has a medical record number, and has the index event that is associated with that index state. These three surface epitopes are actually used in other relationships with method objects. So how do condition lines talk to each other? Well, we had that in a previous talk, through temporal relations. What are those temporal relations? There's a within relationship. There's a when in duration, where you're pointing to the durational event on another condition line. The study designer method is an object that talks to the cohort. A method sometimes talks to the cohort through the cohort's index state, seeking events or outcomes anchored from the index state of the cohort's patients across elapsed time. So, for example, the method might say, find all the events or find the first event that occurred within 0 to 365 days of the cohort's index state. This would be the typical within statement. A method sometimes talks to the patients in the cohort through the event which defined that patient's index state. You saw this with the when operator, so that a condition line can point with its when operator to another condition line, and by doing that, tells the event canvas, I only want to include events in my condition line that occurred during the duration of the event to which I am pointing. A method sometimes talks to the cohort by referencing only the medical record number and then asking a calendaric question for those patients. Does this patient have an echo in the year 2014? All it cares about is it wants to know the patient's MRN and look for the presence of an echo in 2014. Our original cohort of the group and the analysis method 
had a very simple representation. The representation was of the index state, and we said the analysis method touches the cohort member through its index state. Now we know that the interaction between method and cohort can anchor on the three epitopes, and it anchors in the following way. As you remember, you have the cohort object, and on the surface, for each individual member, you can see the index date, the medical record number, and the index event. Now let's take a look at how the method talks to the cohort object. If you look at both the medical record number and the index date, this is done with a method that uses a within clause. The within clause looks for the MRN and looks at the elaboration of time from the index date so it can find events that occur within a certain period of time after the index date. If you use the medical record number and index event, medical record number and index event, this would be a situation where you have a method that's using a when in duration. That is, the method is looking during the duration of this patient's durational event, during this patient's hospitalization, for example. And sometimes the method merely looks at the medical record number, for example, when it does a when in calendaric and it says, can I find the echoes that occurred in 2014 for this MRN? And so now you can see how the cohort object, which expresses those three epitopes, can interact with a method using the temporal relations within, when in duration, when in calendaric. The analysis definition is an object in an advanced method used for time to outcome or list. You've already seen that in the lecture series. A when operator can reference a condition line within the analysis definition object. And this is a drop down that would do it. It says I want to select a system duration from my analysis definition canvas. It's already on the canvas. This is from another condition line. So in this example, you can see this is the analysis definition canvas. You have the first line, first readmission, and this is actually pointing outside to the cohort. But the second line, which is a when in, is saying I want to get those echoes that occurred during the inpatient admission, which is the first condition line of the analysis definition. A when operator can ignore the condition lines entirely and reference a cohort outside the analysis definition. The drop down for that is instead of select system duration, you select cohort collection duration. And then you end up with an analysis definition that has first readmission and an ejection fraction when in the cohort collection. It's pointing outside to the cohort itself. It wants to make sure there's an echo during that original hospitalization outside, not the first readmission. Analysis definition when condition line pointed to a cohort index event. So let's actually take a look at it. Here's a cohort object. Here's a time to outcome method. Here's an analysis definition. And I actually display it here. And you can see the first line, the first readmission, is pointing to the index date because it's asking for there's a first readmission 0 to 365 days after the cohort collection date. And the second line, the ejection fraction, is a when in pointing to the index event of the cohort member. Suggested reading. For additional insights, read Riddles in Accountable Healthcare.